Today I'm working on installing that range vent. I have to do it for mechanical inspection and so that's what I did. And according to code it has to be rigid duct, so not the same stuff that we used on the furnace. And this is a learning experience. I'm using 7 inch round rigid duct and it comes separated like this. It comes where the pieces don't come together, but they're pre-bent in such a way where they do kind of fit together. Now here's a short piece that I have had to cut. So how this actually goes together, see if I could show you. How this actually goes together is this part slides into that part and it just kind of holds on. So on this one, see if I can do this one handed. Okay, so you see how they kind of just overlap in, it slides in and it's not very friendly about it, but that's in. So, if you notice, it didn't go in all the way down. It is a pain in the butt, but it's doable. Once I got the whole thing together, I struggled hardcore getting these screws in. I got these screws here. They're, no, wrong screw. See, they're supposed to cut into the metal themselves. And in theory, that's all fine and dandy, but it just kind of spins and spins and spins until it eventually cuts in. What I ended up doing is using this bit here to drill a pre-hole, which is really tiny. It's not really a, a, barely a hole at all, but it's deep enough or wide enough for these front teeth to get a grip. And then once they get a grip, they finish drilling through and it sucks on in. To close in the seam, we are using the leftover tape from the furnace. And these codes are important because they told us we would not pass our inspections unless our tape had these codes on them. So that's what we got. And because we have leftover, I'm just using the same ones on this. I'm not sure if it's code required or not. I don't really care because I already have it. So I'm just gonna use it on this to seal up the seams. The way this stuff goes together is you'll have one end that's crimped, which makes it smaller in diameter, and then you have the other end that's not crimped. Now, if you need to splice pieces together, like you end up with two ends that aren't crimped together, you have to get a tool for crimping it down. Now, praise God, I didn't have to do that because this five feet stick was the exact right length to get into the area I need above the range. But this fits in, you screw it in, and you tape it. This fits in, you screw it in, and you tape it. Another thing to note about these connections here is you have to think about the flow of air. Now in this case, it's a range vent, and this is what goes into the cabinet. So the air is gonna flow up that, across, and out. And you have to follow the pattern of the flow so that it does not overlap the wrong way inside the pipe. So for instance, let's say the air was going this way, and I put this, this, inside that. Once it's inside, air can get caught between here and here, and then that could create leaks. But if the air is going that way, it has a negative pressure, so it won't put pressure on the tape and it won't cause leaks. So you have to follow that pattern as best you can in order to keep it a good seal. On the end here where it goes out of the wall, this is a seven inch pipe. And this is a reducer from seven inch to six inch. And this is a six inch vent going out of the house. 
To install the range vent, which is the bigger one, I had to drill a round hole six inches. I didn't want to spend $30 on a drill bit for one hole, so I used a sawzall. And then all I had to do was use four screws to screw it into the side. Overall, a pretty simple project, other than wrestling with the metal ductwork, that was a pain. But other than that, it's pretty easy.